telling you, if they got nothing to hide, they got nothing to be scared of. Yeah? You're good with the Manchester painting anyone up here? Loha rubs his forehead beneath his hood and stares at the ground. You As you approach, his face hardens and he stands at his full height. So? Loha takes the amulet and turns it over in his hand. He pockets it matter-of-factly. What did you find in the cave? He's really dead then. Thank the gods. You don't know what world of good you've done. I owe you. Whole realm owes you, really. But I'll do my best to settle that debt myself. Take this key. Nicked it from the whites. It opens a chest in the Magister Barracks, second floor. Be careful getting at it. If they spot you, it'll be lights out. Should be some good stuff in there, though. Real good. Well, someone will have to clean up the mess in that cave. Bury the dead, get rid of anything the Magisters might use to pin anything on us. But you, I imagine you'll be moving on. Right, yes, indeed. Apart from Mordus, I can think of three folks in the area who'd be worth your time. Give me him first, a demonologist. My people reported he passed through here not long ago. Avoided the Magisters very carefully, that one. Jay hands his name. I'll show you where we last saw him. Next is an easy one. Well, the last one I can think of may not be useful. There's an elf called Sahela. They worship that girl. Like she were their flesh munching god himself. And there you have it. I hope one of them can tell you what you need to know. I guess there's no hiding it now. It's like this I didn't sign up to move Death Fog. Other weapons, even soul forged weapons, sure. But Death Fog? <laughs> Absolutely not. When we found the bomb on a Magister's ship, I was told to ship it to Arx along with the rest of the stuff. But... I couldn't. I didn't want my people to have it any more than theirs. Nothing good can come of Death Fog. Nothing. Mordor's disagreed, obviously. But thanks to you, he's dead. I'll go destroy the Death Fog bomb myself. Make sure no one can get their hands on it. Ever. What do you mean? Do you mean... My gods, were we too late? You need to get to Arx as quickly as possible. That's where she's planning to use it. What have we done? I don't deserve your kindness. I should have told you before. I just... No, I've got no excuse. I'm gonna do what I can to stop the Queen. I suggest you try the same. Get to Arx. End this before Justinia does. There'll be a wedding in full swing by the time you arrive. A girl named Isla and some do-nothing type. Her father's well placed, though. If anyone knows where to find the Queen, it's him. Mikhail Ross is his name. Tell him I sent you. Arx, wedding, Mikhail Ross. Got that? Off with you then. Time ain't on our side. Why you got to make us hurt ya? That's a lot of blood.
Looking rough, Maul. Real rough. What is it? I have a lot on my mind. Ah, the innocent! Killed by sorcerers! The most vile! Loha rubs his forehead. So, Loha what did you find in the cave? I, he's ri I, oh, take this key. Nicked it from the whites. What is it? I have a lot on my mind. I have a lot on my mind. That's right. Lost one of my best lads, Anhar. Didn't get Jalia's body back, though. Maybe one of them beasts took her like they did the sorcerers. Bloody lad. Flapping his gums in the next life, too. That's another little venture of ours. Don't concern you, though. We will, once the Reds turn down the alarm a bit. They're jumpy as all hell for the moment. Won't do anyone any good to raise a ruckus now. A lot of blood. You ain't gonna last much longer.
Quite good to see you again, Governor. Heard you're the new champion. Well done, I say. Kibs at war. Hmm. Right good to see you again, Governor. Heard you're the new champion. Well done, I say. Quite good to see you again, Governor. Heard you're the new champion. Well done, I say. favourite. He's a physician in the Divine Order, Mother's Pride. Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. Yeah? What do you want? Huh. I want another beer and a bowl of stew. Which of us is more likely to get what they want, do you think? Guess that makes me a sinner. Perhaps you can help us settle an argument. Thatcher here is one of my dearest friends, but she isn't the brightest. Tatcha grins, hello. Our mate Boris got posted to Fort Joy for consorting with lizards. And Tatcha here still fancies a turn around the park with Lovric's lizard. I say she'd be sleeping with the enemy. What say you? They look at you expectantly. Thatcher looks victorious. Eden looks annoyed. You're as bad as she is. Get lost then, you're no use to me. Eden turns back to her drink. Thatcher smiles goodbye. Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. She tips you a wink, then turns away. Bell rings 
the warning and the tide is on the turn. The chest won't open. Speak the word, and I shall open. Speak the word, the magic word, and I shall open. No. I did not understand. Do you want a buffer? Is your buffalo a no? No. Still no. I am already clothed. I am a chest. Yes, you could. Do not profane. Speak. This seems likely an excellent ch You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard? Then you're an idiot. Weathered and rugged, the man sleeps soundly. He mumbles in his slumber. I... I... Oh, mother, I have no words for... Huh? What? He wakes. See? He settles back to sleep. Perhaps I could go downstairs for a As you approach the silken robed noble, Ifan does a double take and laughs in recognition. He pulls you to one side. I know this man, and he's not at all what he seems. A moment. Ifan bounds forward and embraces the man, all effusive greetings. As they part, talking animatedly, the man's beard slips sideways down his face. He's wearing a disguise. Ifan laughs as he straightens the beard. They chatter away for some time, using a guttural cant you struggle to understand. At one point, the man says something and looks over at you intently. Ifan waves his hand and laughs. The man hunkers down and seems to be sketching a rough map on the floor, using an apple, some playing cards and a fistful of threads pulled up from the carpet. Ifan claps the man on the back and turns to leave. Well, now we know the way to the sawmill. And we know Roost thinks I'm bringing you there as part of the Godwoken contract. Better watch yourself, lad. Got greedy eyes on you. Sets me on edge. Look out! I see a trap nearby. But mother, I'm sleeping.
Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. Hmm. You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard? Then you're an idiot. And I'm free. You can trust me. I can see a sorcerer from a mile away. And you can't be too careful, you know? If they can get Alexander, they can get any of us. You're right about that. Right as right as shame is. An absolute shame. Gossip? Oh, we don't gossip. We just say poor Alexander. It ain't right. You say. Then you're an idiot. The town is poor, but this room... A weathered woman in a dirty sea captain's tunic babbles breathlessly to herself. The bell rings a warning and the tide is on the turn. And I without my compass. The ship is in the locker. On the bottom in the rocky shallows. And all are drowned but me. And yet, can you hear? The bell rings on. The bell haunts me yet and it would drive me mad. Perhaps I am already mad, but I swear I hear the bells. Please, make it stop. She buries her head in her hands and cries. Make it stop. You've got to pick who you can trust. You got that right, Hilka. You got that right. And I'm saying you can trust me. I can see a sorcerer from a mile away. And you can't be too careful, you know? If I can get Curiosity some, kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy. What right about that? Right mm. as rain, you The bell rings are warning and the tide is on the turn. You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard? Then you're an idiot. <sighs> As you approach the silken... I know this man. If and bow, they chatter away. The man, if and cl... Well... Careful! Careful I spotted a trap. That's a trap! You're an idiot. Curiosity kills the cat, or gets it sent to Fort Joy.
Hear the bells are ringing? <laughs> A ghostly seaman stares at the captain, his lip curled in a malevolent grin, his eyes wide with hate, and all the time he rings his bell. Are you her man, or sail you with us? I'm doing my duty, here I am. I'm the lookout. His lip curls over his black... Rocks ahead, Captain! The bell rings on. A ghostly seaman... Sail you with her, lizard, or sail you... I'm doing my duty here, I am. But I'm on duty here. There are rocks ahead and the Captain must know it. Who rings the bell? The ghost's eyes widen in horror. He screams. The word no fades away with the echoes of the bell. And You're willing to risk Fort Joy for one night with a lizard. You can trust me. Then you're an idiot from a mile away. And you can't be too careful, you know? If I can get Alexander. A weathered woman in a dirty sea captain's... My ears are still a-ringing. And I have you to thank for it? Then thank you, I surely do. That accursed bell lies with the peacemaker, on the bottom in the rocky shallows. My compass lies there too. The compass surely lies on the bottom, near where the ship was wrecked. Take it with my blessing, if you can find it. My sailing days are done. Let me mark your chart. But you be warned, stay off the wreck itself. Let her lie as a monument to her dead crew and as testament to my mistake. She goes white, as white as the proverbial ghost. You've got no call to go looking for no cargo. Far as anyone's concerned, we sail with an empty hold and if there's anything left to salvage, you leave it where it is. Heed me. Leave the cargo of the peacemaker alone. She turns away. Conversation over. And you can't be too careful, you know? If I can get Alexander, I can get any of us. You're right about that. Right as rain, you'll go.
my friends, for Alexander the Innocent. I'm telling you, if killed by sorcerers, a most vile incident. Yeah, you're good with the Majesty's cage. A valiant warrior against the void. Taken too early, all hope destroyed. The path thus ended, the conclusion of a noble bloodline. Come on, lives are at stake.
won't budge. Spotted something. This shrine fills you with a sense... This must be the wreck of the Peacemaker. Some of her cargo may remain.
force at you, Dallas. I'm going to send you to be cured, sorcerer. A fisherman stares at the water, muttering to himself. The missus will kill me. She'll tear me a new mouth halfway down my neck. Fish will bite, all right. Not that you'd eat one. I've got a worse problem than that. Way, way worse. I've gone and dropped me wedding ring in the water. I was casting a line and I cast me bloody wedding ring instead. Guess my fingers aren't as fat as they used to be. He contrives to give you a sad look. The wife's got a sentimental attachment to that ring. Her mum took it off her dad's drowned body, here, on this very beach. A mischievous grin appears upon his face. Ah, I'm joshing ya. Scammed it off a drunken elf in the tavern a few years back. But still, the wife will be furious. I could do that. I could. But seeing as the ring has a bit of sauce to it, like as not, going in there will attract Voidwoken. All things equal, between an angry wife and Voidwoken, I'm leaning towards the wife. I'm not asking you to risk your life on account of me and my marital woes, but if you fancy a paddle, you can go right ahead. I've spotted something. Void woken to arm.
A horrified fisherman stares at the water, muttering to himself. That was terrifying. I need to get myself a new line of work. Something as far away from the water as I can go. Goat herd, high on a mountain. Spice trader in the deserts. Anything, if the missus will go for it, of course. She likes the beach. You found it! How wonderful! The wife will be thrilled! Or well, she would if she ever found out about this, which of course she won't. But I can't thank you enough. He slips the ring onto his finger, where it dangles loose. I feel better already. I need to fatten myself up again so I don't lose it a second time. Can't be relying on the kindness of strangers to dig me out. The very best to you. With a new confidence in his stance, he turns back to his fishing. Careful now. That's a trap. Careful now. That's a trap. Careful. I've spotted a trap. Careful. I've spotted a trap.
Here lies Patrick, prophet. He perished in this place, predicting the downfall of Bracchus Rex. That's no way to die. Bracchus was quite the tyrant. Lucian's teeth, these torches will not stay lit. What? What's happening to the shrine? Here lies Patrick, prophet. As the torches around you flicker and crack to life, you hear a low groan. It starts soft, then crescendos, until your chest rattles and your head buzzes. Rakas Rex! God damn you to this hell in which I suffer! God damn these burning flames! My blood boils in a death, and you ask if it hurts. The indignity fans the flames. Just when the agony subsides, more come to the shrine and put flame to the torches. They think to honor me. Instead, they incinerate me. The curse is everlasting. Whenever I am honored, I will suffer for it. Brack a saw to that! I knew him and knew his secrets. I saw his rise and fall as woven into the tapestry of time. He branded my truth as blasphemy, and I burn for it! I live that horror. The truth invites danger. Some would sooner be swallowed by the void than tell it. Wait. Wait, you, I see it. You too follow a path consumed by fire. You must take my gift from among the flames. With it, you will know truth. With it, you can... The rumble reaches a deafening forte, then dissipates. The voice is gone. Only the whisper of the wind fills your ears. Lying at your feet is a strange lamp of ancient design. Spots of gold shimmer through the thick grime that coats it. As you hunker down for a closer look, the lamp jerks slightly, almost imperceptibly. The lamp feels strangely hot to your touch. As you wipe away the years of dirt and grime, it trembles in your hand. Heavy smoke spills out of the spout of the lamp, falling to your feet, where it flows away from you. The vapor arches into the air and starts to take shape before you. Who summons m What? One of you? His face twists into a sneer and he flexes his claws. What's wrong, God Woken? Did the Seven turn you down too? Or are you here seeking even more power? I should strike you down where you stand, God Taint. Because it would be a kindness. 
I've known the power you feel, the promises you were made. I too was named Godwoken once. My god gave it all. Power, glory, hope. It was intoxicating. Until she took it away. Deep inside, you can feel your god stirring. It's recoiling, revolted. No wonder Zor Stissa turned this one away. Unworthy, she said. Unworthy to be the vine. So she gave it to another. What kind of a monster gives you that power only to strip it from you? To promise you will be the light of the world and then cast you into darkness? It was my birthright. They promised me greatness and then cast me aside like a used rag. So I looked elsewhere. The Void said I could have eternal power. That I could be the light of the world. And it delivered. I have power unlike any god woken. Even if I lack my freedom. It laughed as I was sealed away in that lamp. Be the light of the world, god woken, it said. Even so, it was more honest than your hellish seven. Three? Why should I grant you one? You and your gods are a blight upon this world. I would rid the world of your corruption, not help you spread it. The Jin's eyes dart about, taking in your surroundings. The world seems fine to me, god scum. I imagine it will shine even brighter once I tear out your lying tongue.
none. is mine. Glory is mine. The enormous stone slab is covered with cryptic engravings, obscured in places by smears of dried blood. The central rune is stained black with a thousand years' worth of blood. Her symbols radiate from the slab's central rune, but you do not know their meaning.
The enormous stone slab is covered with cryptic engravings. Half the runes are words. The rest are corresponding musical notes. The inscription is an ancient dwarven dirge. The melody is similar to a popular dwarven drinking song, though the modern version is markedly less macabre. Your memory jars at the recollection. The details elude you, but broad strokes surface. Something about the afterlife and a very large bird. You cannot recall anything more. The central rune is stained black with a thousand years' worth of blood. A relative... The enormous stone slab is cut. Symbols radiate from the slab. The enormous stone slab is covered. Half the runes are words. The red. The melody is similar to a popular. The central rune is. Nice. Thank <laughs> you. 